the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 230. Jeremiah 34 to 36. Jacob's descendants. While Jerusalem was surrounded by Babylon, Jeremiah persuaded Zedekiah to trust God and to surrender to Babylon. First point. King Zedekiah swore to keep the laws of freeing the slaves in a kingdom of priests when the national circumstances became dangerous, but then he broke his own words. Babylon had conquered almost all of South Judah's territories, and Jerusalem was hanging by a thread. Because of this, Zedekiah prayed to God that he would keep the laws of freeing the slaves according to the laws of the kingdom of priests in front of the leaders. The laws here referred to the laws in Deuteronomy. If any of your people, Hebrew men or women, sell themselves to you and serve you six years, in the seventh year you must let them go free. However, not long after his promise, he recaptured the slaves whom he had freed. Because of this, God told Jeremiah again of the punishment South Judah would face. South Judah went back on their promise made with God, made in the Jerusalem temple, and so God declared punishment on them. Second point, God complimented the people of Laika, who kept the words of their ancestors during the times of King Jehoiakim. Now, we go back to the times of Jehoiakim. God focused on the people of Rechab who lived following the words of their ancestors. God told Jeremiah to go to the people of Rechab and meet their descendants and to greet them with wine. The descendants of Rechab had a conversation with Jeremiah. They were living in Canaan when Joshua came to conquer and so part of them came to live with the descendants of Judah, and the other part came to live in the south of Canaan. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, was also a member of this tribe. Their ancestor, Jehonada, partnered with Jehu's reformation and prayed a law in killing the Baal worshippers and those associated with the Ahab. Jehonada told his descendants to not drink wine and to live in tents while leading a nomadic lifestyle. They were forbidden to build houses, sow cities, and also to gather possessions. Jehonadab told his people that in this way, they will be able to preserve their lives in this land. Therefore, despite how 300 years had passed, Jehonadab's descendants lived whilst maintaining Jehonadab's rules. The reason why some of these people were in Jerusalem was because they were temporarily trying to escape the Babylonian army. The people of Rechab were worried that if they lived in Canaan, then they may become corrupt by the Canaan idols, and thus they had decided to set themselves apart. Even though it was a period where people served the Baals, in various parts of Israel, these people managed to keep their faith in God. God tested these people through Jeremiah by offering them wine. However, they did not drink a single drop of wine. As the story of Ruth and Boaz was like an oasis in the middle of the desert, the people of Lycab were also like a breath of fresh air to God. Third point. God compared the people of Lakeup and the people of South Judah and rebuked the people of South Judah. God looked upon the people of Lakeup with a favorable heart. They had succeeded in serving God from the days of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph 
whilst living in the promised land Canaan. They obeyed in God and did not follow in the evil ways of North Israel or South Judah. God therefore blessed these people through Jeremiah. Therefore, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says, Jehonadab, son of Rechab, will never fail to have a descendant to serve me. Fourth point, the waters of God given to Jeremiah were recorded during the reign of King Jehoiakim and read aloud by Baruch. When Jeremiah was unable to deliver God's message outside, God made him record his message on a scroll. The reason God told him to record his message was in order for the future descendants to repent from their sins and ask for forgiveness. This was God's heart. God did not find pressure in the death of the evil, but rather waited for the evil person to turn from their ways and return to God. God revealed his heart through Ezekiel. Thus, God told Jeremiah to record his message on a scroll. When Jeremiah could not deliver God's message himself, he called for Baruch. Baruch recorded God's message on a scroll and read it aloud to the people in the Jerusalem temple. Baruch went in the place of Jeremiah and read aloud God's words. He also looked after the files for the purchase of Jeremiah's land in Anathoth. Baruch was like Jeremiah in that he suffered in order to walk in God's way. Fifth point, the servants of Jehoiakim burned the scrolls of Jeremiah. When the people heard Jeremiah's record, there were mixed responses. Micaiah delivered Jeremiah's scroll to Elishama, Jeleiah, Elathan, Zedekiah, and others. So the officials reported this to the king and told Jeremiah and Baruch to hide. The officials were extremely shocked after reading God's message on Jeremiah's scroll. The reason was because Jeremiah and Baruch could have been put to death like Uriah previously. King Jehoiakim burned Jeremiah's scroll and refused to repent. Jehoiakim, who was in his winter palace at the time, burned the scroll and then pretended as though nothing had happened. He was indeed very different to his father, Josiah. However, this action proved to be pointless, as God told Jeremiah to simply record it again. God's judgment against the South Judah, Jehoiakim and his servants became written on a scroll. Jehoiakim's end was as God had declared. I am so excited that you have in your hands now and on your phones the Tongok Bible app. And let me tell you why. Very few people, just a handful of people in the world understand the way Dr. Zhou does, the way that this is one story from Genesis to Revelation, one story. And what does it mean for us to daily live that story as our life story? And he has found a way to do this. We need daily marinating of our mind and the soaking of our spirit in, in the Word of God. And that's why a, a, a Tong Doc Bible is so important. The scriptures, the story, Genesis to Revelation, is the daily mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathings of the Spirit of God into humans to make us truly who God made us to be. And that's why this app is so important. This app shows you how to do mouth, that God, enables God to do mouth to mouth resuscitation on you every day of your life, 365 days a year. I'm so glad you have it. You will feel the healing that comes from mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathings of the Spirit on you as you use this app.